Hey there friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Liz, my company is Hello from Liz Matthews and I am excited to spend some time with you today on this Friday, August 4th. I am back with you just one week since my last episode. This is uh, number 67 and I I am like this liking this regular routine I am getting into. Now I will let you know now that next Friday I will not be doing a floss tube video and I'll tell you why in just a bit. But I'm going to try to keep up with these shorter, more regular videos. It's so nice to connect with you guys again after being gone for so long. So you guys are back in my um, studio, which is in the lower level of our house. And this might be odd to you because in, in last week's video, I talked about how I'm moving studios and offices and filming spaces to have better light and this was the area that I was trying to avoid but obviously I have not made any of those changes yet they'll be coming after uh, my next set of releases and I feel like I can breathe and guilt-free switch things around which just hasn't happened yet but today is like a big day of filming I've done a couple videos already for the membership and um, since you were set up down here, I was just like, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep checking things off the list. So you are back in my current studio. I've got two big lights here. And hopefully within the next month or two, things will be switched around. And I will be enjoying that big window with natural light pouring in on me. But for now, we're back down here. It's been a busy week since I was chatting with you last. Joe and I got away for one night. We went back to my hometown of Myersville, Maryland and spent the night with Mare. Mare lives in the same house that I grew up in. She and dad built it when I was, I want to say like four, five. I was very young, 86. That's what the little brick on the side of the house says. So I was three actually. But there have been the same neighbors and the same community for all of that time. And I truly feel like they're like my aunts and uncles. They've grown up with me. I've known them forever. So there was an outdoor um, like get together, cook out barbecue at one of the neighbor's houses. And Joe and I went to visit with everybody. It was so nice. And new, there is a new set of neighbors who moved in that are Joe and I's age. And we just like to get to know them. So we uh, were away for a night. I've gotten together with mom quite a few times. She's been here for dinner. We've done a little shopping and it's just been a good, um, productive, busy, check things off the list kind of week, which is what I love the most. Um, I have a handful of things I want to share with you, but I plan to have you on your way to your next video or enjoying your weekend rather quickly, but let's dive into it. What do you think? I have a couple things I wanted to mention just like housekeeping, check off the list kind of things. First, mom and I filmed a video which is on my YouTube channel right now for you to go watch. It is her latest releases. She had four releases that came out in April. And because we were traveling at the time and then things got really chaotic, we were never able to do a new release video for her. We also kind of like to do them together because we usually have we both usually have new releases, but this was just her on her own. So better late than never, we filmed that new release video. So I will link it in the description box of this video below. If you want to go check that out and see Kathy Barrett's four latest releases, you can do that. Um, I will also link every pertinent piece of information to this video in the description box below my contact information links for friends I mentioned, products I mentioned, all of that stuff, it'll be below. So you can click down there and get where you need to go. I also um, sent out a newsletter. Wow, this was probably a month ago now. Oh, wow, where does time go? And in that newsletter, there was a freebie for you. So I wanted to make sure that you saw that. I called this freebie Floral Hearts. And um, this is just like a this is a little Canva mock-up I did because I did not select colors for this design. First of all, let me tell you how you get this. You just have to subscribe to my newsletter, that's all. I will put a link below and um, it is included as a free PDF in my newsletter. So it's there for you, no charge, enjoy it, stitch it, love it. Um, this is what it looks like. This is the chart I can show you because it's my chart. But if you look down here, 
you'll see that I recommend selecting your own colors. Now, when I hear that, I think, oh, that's really fun. I need to select, you know, what is this, seven of my favorite colors. I feel like as stitchers, you have colors you're drawn to and that you gravitate to. But I realized, um, I handed this out at StitchCon too. I realized when I handed it out to some people and their reaction was not what I expected, that maybe not everybody is as comfortable as I think they are with selecting their own colors. So um, I wanted to give you some like some inspiration and some ideas of what the different colorways could look like. So again, here's the chart. You fill in this thread list with your favorite colors. So that's just basically a reference point for you. And then I did a computer rendering of three versions. There are clearer pictures in the newsletter. So when you sign up for it, you'll get to see it more clearly than what I'm going to show you. But here's kind of like a sweet little pastel -y muted tones. This is more bold, red, white, bluish, and then kind of um, a more muted gray tone situation over there. So sky is the limit. I hope that you enjoy it. Maybe one of these speaks to you, maybe something entirely different crosses your mind. I hope you do that. So that's there for you free. Enjoy it. Go print it, go download it, stitch it from me to you. And then the only other new release bit of news that I have to share with you right now is that a new exclusive design went up in the Hello from Liz Matthews membership. I put a new design out every month and this month it is called Boo Spook Hot. And here is what that looks like. These are computer renderings. I have not stitched this model yet. I cannot wait to get stitching on this. I hope it's something that I can stitch myself. I always feel like it's a good sign when I feel that way. But for now you have computer renderings and um, there are just two different fabric options shown here. It's the same color palette. So if you're interested in Boo Spook Haunt, that is available throughout the month of August. Yes, August. I was about to say April because that's where it feels like we should be in the Hello from Liz Matthews membership link below. More info there. I'm not going to spend your time today talking about that. So those were the little updates, housekeeping things I wanted to chat with you about. I also want to make sure that I mention Common Threaded Stitcher Weekend because that is happening next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And that event is the reason that I will not be back on YouTube doing a regular floss tube next week because this is going to be a really fun weekend event. It's really hosted mainly on the Instagram platform. That's how we're going to connect. But I have plans to um, go live and to share a lot of content there next weekend. So you will not see me in this format um, next Friday. But hopefully you are on Instagram and partaking in the Common Threaded Stitcher Weekend. And I will see you there. If you're not familiar with what Common Threaded Stitcher Weekend is, it is an Instagram-based um, kind of get to know each other, enjoy the community virtual event. Kia of Kia B Quilting started it several years ago now. There have been a couple rounds of Common Threaded Stitcher. I've been on the team before and I'm happy to be on the team again this year. Team just meaning that I um, help spread the word and promote it. And I'm really looking forward to it. Again, the event happens Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, August 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th. And this year we're switching it up a little bit. In the past, um, there have been like photo prompts that span the entire month asking you to share a bit about your stitching world, maybe like your favorite design or your favorite stitching spot, favorite anything to do with stitching. And the point of that is just to connect everybody in this big wide internet world because we all have a common love of stitching. So that is why it's called the Common Threaded Stitcher event. And this year we're looking at it more from a, um, a virtual retreat event point of view, meaning let's celebrate all weekend long as you would if you were doing a retreat at home. Now I am a 
solo stitcher. There is a community of stitchers around me, but I don't have any plans to get together with them for next weekend's event. So I am planning on things that I can do here by myself, and I will be sharing more of that on Instagram as it gets closer. I haven't finalized everything, but I do have some plans I want to share with you. So in the vein of kind of looking at it as an at-home retreat, because everybody loves to go to retreats, but maybe not everybody can can do that, has the ability to do that. You can have just as much fun at home um, stitching by yourself and celebrating in any way that you can. So here are my plans. Let me flip this page here, because I've written them down. That's how kind of crazy things are. I need to like make my, make my plans and write them down. Um, the event starts Thursday. You will get a lot of information and you'll hear more as we get closer. But Thursday, the event starts. So be on Instagram to partake and join and make new friends there. And then Friday, this is where I have kind of made my own plans up. Friday, I am heading to my local needle workshop. I am in um, the Baltimore, Maryland area. So I'm going to go to the stitching post it's in Catonsville, Maryland. And I plan on being there Friday at 11 a.m. <laughs> if anybody is local and wants to join me there and connect and say hi and visit together, I would so love that. I will be there at 11 with a shopping list. Um, maybe an iced coffee in hand. We'll see. But I plan on picking up some things just as you would if you were going to a retreat, you treat yourself to some new things. Um, I also plan on having a new start. I will talk to you more about that in a minute, but I'm going to pick up all of the supplies I need to start that new start over the common thread this your weekend. And, um, I mean, who, who knows what else I could find? I don't want to limit myself. I'm going to gather a shopping list and try to check some things off my shopping list while I'm there. So I'm really looking forward to that and hopefully I can visit with some of you local stitchers while I am there. Then um, Friday evening, looking at my list here, Elizabeth and Can Stitch, Liz and I are gonna do a live together and I hope that you can join us there. It will be linked everywhere, including through the Common Threaded Stitcher Instagram account. That is where you can find all the information you need. Follow Common Threaded Stitcher on Instagram. But we're going to do a live get together at some point that evening. And then throughout the rest of the weekend, I have some plans for um, movies and stitching and maybe going to treat myself to... Um, like some takeout food and stitching, just really trying to make it as much as an event as possible and as close to a real life retreat as possible. I will certainly miss all of my retreat friends and it won't be the same, but you know what? You can celebrate this community virtually and enjoy the weekend no matter where you are. So I'm really looking forward to that and I will chat more about that on Instagram as next weekend gets closer. I just want to reiterate one thing that I mentioned in my last YouTube video is you do not need an invitation to join Common Thread Stitcher. It is open to absolutely everyone. So you are welcome to participate, partake, no signups, no requirements, no purchase, no nothing. It, if you have Instagram, you are good to go. And we look forward to seeing you there. Okay. Let me share with you, oh, I'm kind of scattered, but that's okay. It's like we're sitting down as friends, right? Let me share with you this. Okay. We talked about the new office space. I am so looking forward to it. I don't know about you, but I feel like everywhere I have walked in this house in the past seven years, <laughs> especially recently, I have just like left a pile of stuff. It's like I leave explosions everywhere I go because I'm just like, go, go, go. And I need to just stop and clean up after myself and organize and like get rid of stuff I don't need. And just, I'm really looking forward to that in the new office space. <laughs> Rant over. Um, one of the things that really bothers me is how I store my DMC. Can you see why this would be a bother? So, I, oh, it's chaos. Um, this is my green bag. Blue bag. You can see there's a lack of organization happening here. Red threads. 
And then as I use them or pull them or stitch with them, I bobbinate them and they go in my DMC plastic box. I love bobbinated threads. You are not going to convince me otherwise. There is no better solution in my mind than bobbinated threads. It works really well for pulling colors when I'm like designing something new to have them on bobbins. I just really like it. So that is my way. Everybody has their own way. I even bobbinate my silks and I know that is a no-no, but there are no rules, right? We do what we like in the stitching world. So I'm a bobbinator. Well, in the hopes of future Liz being more organized and neat and tidy, when I was at Home Goods the other day, I found these boxes and I thought this will be absolutely perfect in my new office space to put my threads. Can you see this texture? It's like a natural linen texture, magnetic clasp. The box opens and I am so excited. Now, in reality, I'm not gonna go through and bobbinate all of these threads until one is the right color. So what I'm hoping to do is get my hands on a couple more boxes of these clear boxes. By the way, in my memory, in my mind, these boxes are like $3.49 at the craft store because that's what I paid when I was younger. They're like $9 now, which blows me away. A lot of things are like that in my world, like a fixed price, which is much lower than what they are now. Anyway, so I'm gonna get a couple more of these and they fit perfectly in this new box. So I'm hoping to upgrade my organization game. This box is probably 20 years old. It's from Ikea, Patterns Cross Stitch and it's not efficient and it doesn't work well. So I will just <laughs> tuck those away in here until they're bobbinated. But how great will that be on a shelf in a cross stitch office? I think it's just perfect. Um, I got two sizes, a smaller one too. I wanna hit up other, did I not say hit up in my last video too when I was like, that's so unnatural? Apparently I say it now. Um, I would like to visit, hit up other home goods or um, TJ Maxx and see if they have more of these because I would like more. I think they'll just be so great. They basically hide all your disorganization really nicely. Small was $9.99, large, I wanna say it was 20, which I was, mm, not pleased about yet purchased. So I don't know, maybe you are also lacking organization and that would work for you. Check out your local home goods. I was going to say Michael's check out home goods. I have, um, let me show you my stitching because the rest is all happy mail sent to me and purchased. I love, I love haul. It is one of my favorite things to watch across many different subject um, areas, many different YouTube videos. I love haul. So I will share that with you last in case haul is not your thing. It certainly is mine, but I have been stitching a lot. So much so that I have stitcher's elbow happening right now. I have stitcher's elbow in my right, and I also have stitcher's knee. I'm making these terms up by the way in my right knee because I sit cross-legged on the couch and stitch. And I think I sit there so long that it just starts to hurt. So um, I was talking in a live video last night with Olivia and she has inspired me to start yoga. So I'm hoping that that helps because I don't know, it's getting sore and I'm not gonna stop stitching because I'm having such a good time. So thank goodness for ibuprofen and hopefully I can strengthen those muscles. I have been stitching a lot, <laughs> suffice to say. A lot of it I cannot show you because I have these upcoming releases in the works. I'm still stitching them. I will never, apparently, be the kind of lady who is ahead of the game, who is a season ahead. I just, I, I won't be. I have to accept that about myself. So yeah, I'm still stitching for releases that are coming in the next couple weeks. 
I will get it done. It's the ninth day of Christmas tree that I'm stitching. It is what it is. It'll happen. It's so crazy to be like, I have to work right now. And my work is stitching. That still just blows my mind. I'm the luckiest girl in the world. I did sneak in a couple stitches on the piece from this book that I told you about. But truth be told, I've got too much work to do. So I haven't been able to really focus on it very well. So when I chatted with you last week, I had finished all of the cross stitching for this piece. Let me find the picture in the book. Let me see here. I had finished all of the cross stitching for that piece. And it was time to do the magic back stitch. That's what I like to call it. And I have started. It is not finished, but I have started. I'm loving doing the back stitch. Let me show you what it looks like. I'm going to need to put something behind here. There is the progress. Isn't that like crazy what the back stitching does? Look at that sweet bird. So I would say that I am more than halfway done with the back stitch. I did, um, or straight stitch. What, what do we call that stitch? I mean, do we just call it by its technical name of back stitch or straight stitch? Let's call it magic stitch because the magic that it makes happen on a piece is unreal and I just love it. Um, I did obviously put my 32 count smoky white linen in a hoop to do all of that back stitching and it works really well and I'm, I'm just enjoying it so much. I hit a roadblock because I have somehow lost my bobbin of the green I need. And yes, I could just pull another green, but I just, I wanna find the right green. So hopefully that turns up soon. And I have a little free time to put some more uh, magic stitches in. I love this piece. It was just a joy to stitch. Look how it just, oh, it just makes everything pop. This was a true joy to stitch. I suspect by the next, um, regular YouTube video I do that that piece will be completed. It is from the book called Ma Jardin Potage. Um, and you can find this on Amazon. It is all garden and fruit vegetable themed pieces and so fun. I, I know you guys know how I feel about it by now. So much fun. All right, I'm gonna put that aside and hopefully, as I said, next time I will have a finish. The FFOing on that is yet to be determined. I just don't know what I'm gonna do. So any suggestions are welcome. I just love it, I love it. Moving on to Happy Mail. That is all the stitching I have to show you this week. Um, You'll see what I've been doing very soon, but for now, that is all I have to show you. I'm sorry. Moving on to Happy Mail. There is something that I treated myself to, and <laughs> it is another book by Veronique Ingenier. She is the author of that garden book I just showed you, and this is called The Magic of Christmas. The Magic of Christmas to Cross Stitch, French Charm for Your Stitch Work. This book is actually printed in... Um, English. So it is the first of the collection of books I have like this that is in English. The rest have all been in French. Um, you don't need to know how to French. You don't need to know how to read French to use them if you are familiar with cross stitch patterns and you can make it work. But this one is actually printed in English. I got it on Amazon. These books, they're not inexpensive. I want to say they're like $30 each. And to me that that's an investment. So I do plan on doing a flip through of all these books so that you can see the patterns you get that are inside because there's nothing worse than like buying a book on Amazon and then having to ship it back because you couldn't see the pictures, right? So I hope I can help you out with that. Really, 
what I hope is that I inspire you and enable you and encourage you to buy these books because I think the stitching is so much fun. So for Common Threaded Stitcher Weekend, when I go to my LNS next week, I am going to kit up something pleasurable for me to stitch next. And it is most certainly going to be from one of these French books that I have acquired. And in fact, when I placed the order for this book, I also ordered, it's either two or three more, I can't remember. I think it's two because I was trying to be in control. And they are going to arrive on Wednesday, August 9th they say. So that is perfect because that's a bit of happy mail to kick off Common Threaded Stitcher Weekend. And I will open those and make a selection for my new start from one of these books and then kit it up at my LNS on Friday. But this, I mean, it's Christmas stitching in this beautiful, delicate style. What is not to love? Let me show you just a couple little motifs from this book. Um, I hope that you're seeing that okay. They're just so, so sweet. And I honestly, I have no idea how I'm going to pick what to stitch next from the collection that I have now. I don't know. But um, this, oh, I love this one. <laughs> Can you even see it? I have more thoughts on these pieces that are included in all of these books, but I'm going to save them for when I do the flip through. Um, I don't want to bore you here, but it's good. It's really good because this is printed in English. It's shipped domestically from Amazon, whereas the other books are from global Amazon. I don't know. And that's why they didn't arrive yet, but they will be here in time for next weekend. I also have some happy mail that is just pure kindness from people in the stitching community. I, you guys never cease to amaze me with your kindness and generosity and I mean stitchers are just they're so wonderful and I'm so happy to be part of this group. So a new friend to me, Gayla, reached out and said that she had the 2006 Prairie Schooler Santa card that was on my list. I um, kind of shared which ones I was missing and what I was looking for. And um, she kindly sent 2006 to me, which was a very hard one to find, by the way. And I appreciate this so much. It means that with this, the only other old older card I need is 2012. So what a find. Thank you so much, Gayla. She not only included this one card I need, but she included some others that I need as well. So I talked about how um, there were more recent year Santas that are still in print that you can find at your LNS and that I hoped to pick them up when I went. But Gayla also had those and she passed them on and I promised to keep them safe and loved and I appreciate it so much. So that was 2019, this is 2020. Love this one. This one might be next. Um, uh, 2021. I love that. And then 2022. I have to admit that when this came out, it's this glow in the dark thread. I, this is a very odd choice to me. And I hate to say anything negative about Prairie Schooler because they are Prairie Schooler. You know how much I love them. This yellow is weird to me. It's very weird to me. So the back of the card, <laughs> somebody wrote a little question mark next to it too. I agree. Look, what are we thinking with this? So it says neon E980. Is that a DMC color? I look at this and I'm like, does this glow in the dark? That's what it looks like. So. If I were to stitch this, I think I would replace that color. Any thoughts, any suggestions? What am I missing? Is that a glow in the dark thread? Is it meant, I mean, is it just that? I don't know. It just seems off for Prairie Schooler to me. So all of that to say, my collection is nearing completion. I will um, hunt on the secondhand market for that last card I need and then we are going to do a full flip through. I have all the cards dating back to 1984. So 
again, my goal is always to encourage, enable, and inspire. So we'll do a flip through and maybe you would like to start collecting Prairie Schoolers as well. Remember that stocking, that catalog I showed you in the last video in the front was a stocking of a wood, a Santa's wood shop scene on the stocking. Um, several of you, no, we talked about this. Several of you told me that that stocking was included in this book and Susan was so kind and let me know that she had a copy of this book that she did not need and asked if she could send it to me and I said heck yes. So I just just like an hour ago got back from my post office at the P.O. box picked this up and flipped through it. It has on the front of it Santa's wood shop stocking that was on the cover of that country craft cross stitch and country craft magazine from 1990. And it's just a much easier to read pattern in here, along with a whole selection of other stockings. Susan, thank you so much. I don't know why I just have this deep urge to make everybody I know a stocking now. Liz of Elizabeth and Cam Stitch and I were chatting about it. And I was like, you are going to enable me so badly. I'm apparently everybody in my life needs a stocking. And we're starting with my dad. So this book, I cannot wait to pour through it. I haven't had it long, but Susan, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I see some major stitching happening in my future. Liz also linked me to the Cooler Design Studio website. She was like, did you see the garden stocking? I was like, no, I did not. So maybe the garden stocking will be mine. I don't know, but it's like the most unnecessary thing ever, hand stitched stockings for everybody. But I don't know, I feel like that's gonna happen for me. I, in what free time? I don't know, but man, they're cute. So the back has pictures of all of the stockings included. I haven't gotten to flip through here very much yet, but there is, let me just find the cross stitch stocking for you. Stitcher Studio stocking, 42 and 43. Look at that. More research needs to be done on my behalf because these look like the cooler design studio stockings that I saw Liz do for her and Rob. It's when I first remember being introduced to Liz on Floss 2 when she was working on the stockings. But they also had that same like block top. So I don't know if these are all published by, I don't know. I don't, are these cooler stockings? Um, I don't know. I'm not informed. I should probably look into that before I try to chat with you about it, but I love them. One thing that I notice is the back stitching is different on these than what I am used to with those French books. The back stitching on these, they kind of tend to like outline block style the stitches whereas the French style they just like overlap those edges and it just kind of flows more does that make any sense like see all your cross stitches are just outlined in straight stitch there whereas this French style I hope you care about this I'm sorry if you don't um feel free to leave me <laughs> if you don't um I'm trying to find a good example here. The French style tends to ignore the square grid that your cross stitch makes and just overlaps it in a very smooth way. Where am I trying to show you? Look there. Does that make sense? So I prefer this way, but I just love these and they are already charted. You know what I could do? When when I was, um, again, chatting with Olivia last night in my live, she was like, you could do ornaments from all of these little motifs in these boxes. Why don't I just make everybody an ornament rather than a full stocking? It seems much more attainable, but what is it about a stocking that is just so Christmassy? We'll see where I end up. Um, 
that, that would be a many year endeavor. So, okay. One more piece of happy mail. This is fabric from Jody of Cedar River. It's just Cedar River Linen and Design. I met Jody at StitchCon 22. It's 2022. And we had dinner one night. And not long after that, she started dyeing linen. And we've chit chatted a little bit. And I was so over the moon to see a package of her beautiful fabric arrive to my house this week. I appreciate it so much, Jody. Um, these linens are gorgeous. Let me try to stack them up for you. And then I want to go through the colors. So not only did Jody send me a stack of her color. Oh, drool. Look at that. She sent me this stack of linen, but she also sent me two pieces of Ada, which I think is super cool because I have been wanting to do some models on Ada and look at that. Look at that. That is gorgeous. And then look at that. My lights, they, they turn things a bit green down here. I hate that. So I look forward to getting in front of that window in that natural light. Oh, Jody, thank you so much. Look how stunning that is. So Cedar River, she has a website. If you were to Google Cedar River Linen and Design, you would find it. Look at that sweet tag. So this color is Arboreal. Arboreal, 36 count linen. Oh, ooh, that's luscious. Look at that. This is going to be 36 count as well. Red cedar. That's gorgeous. Okay, I am a sucker for neutrals. Light, almost white neutrals are nearly impossible to find. They are so apparently hard to, to do well. Um, and this is just gorgeous. Albarium. Look at that. That has like just the most minimal amount of modeling to it. And I love it. Look at this gorgeous neutral. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Overcast. And then the darkest neutral she sent. Great modeling in there. Just a hint of green. I'd actually say it's really true to what you're seeing there. Tefra. I will put all of the information in the description box below. Thank you so much, Jody. These are stunning. So, okay. I believe that is where I leave you for the day. As I said, I will not be back. Um, I will not be back next Friday because I am participating in the Common Thread to Stitcher event. Please join us there. It's going to be really, really great. Find me on Instagram, get more information there, and just prepare for a really, really fun virtual at-home event next weekend. Okay. With that, I'm off to work, and we all know by work, I mean stitch. It's the worst. It's the worst. So happy Friday to you, my friends. I hope you have a great weekend and until next time, take care.